As they neared Wetterton, the Queen ordered her company to halt. She then sent men to the town for supplies. Those sent returned more quickly than she'd assumed they would, their satchels empty, their mounts foaming at the mouth. Your Majesty, the townsfolk have gone right mad, herded all the elves and dwarves at Market Square. Tis a slaughter. The Queen knew well that if she failed to intervene, the town's streets would flow with non-human blood. Just as she knew her meagre force might not subdue an enraged crowd. After some deliberation, the Queen turned to her force. Cities and towns I've fought in. Narrow alleys I've seen more difficult to overrun than many a castle. For a handful of arbalists in high windows can wreak great carnage. Losses of a magnitude we cannot now abide. Meave's footmen dropped their gazes. They knew the decision their queen had reached. Quickly, they prepared to march. That evening, as Raynard drilled the troops, he found more than a dozen missing. They were the non-humans supporting Meave's company, dwarven craftsmen, elven scouts and guides, who had disappeared quietly. It was clear to all they would not serve a monarch who held the lives of friends and kin in such low regard. In gratitude for the kindness you've shown us, please accept this modest offering. May it yet grow. They should have stayed put neath their mount. We'd not have had no problem then. The Lyrians entered the graveyard. Crickets chirped in its tall, windswept grass, and lush green moss covered its crumbling gravestones. Only a fresh bloodstain upon a mausoleum wall suggested that something disturbed the dead in their rest and hunted the living. Save your tears, throw off your grief. An eerie voice sang, its ghastly lament standing Meave's hair on end. Soon your life too shall cease as you pass into the eternal glow. A pockmarked, pustule ridden creature crawled out from behind some gravestones. It vaguely resembled a shriveled, hunchbacked hag, until its head split into two halves, forming a tooth-spiked maw. Attack! Everyone! To reap, a time to sow, and a time to die. I 
guy. Abolish to your command. What... what was that filth? The Queen croaked hoarsely as the dying monster writhed in agony at her feet. I know not, Your Grace, replied Reynard. But to be safe... I would have the corpse chopped up and burned. Elsewise, we will not be certain it shall not return. Yes, have it done, Meave said, brushing her hair from her beaded brow. But quickly, lest dust catch us in this foul place. The Lyrians soon resumed their march. As they left the cemetery behind them, some believed they still heard the haunting dirge upon the air. Or was it just the wind whistling past mossy tombstones? <laughs> 